Last time we ended the video after filling in missing values for the age column. When we take a look at what features we have now, first, there's definitely some features we do not want to use. For example, passenger ID because intuitively that just doesn't make sense. The passenger ID is simply assigned by the order of which each passenger data is entered into the system. We have P class, which we can use without any processing because it's integer value, which is accepted by a lot of models. We can't use names yet. This is what we call a high cardinality feature, where there's a lot of unique values. There might be something useful in the name column, for example, maybe we can tell which passengers are part of the family, but that just sounds like a lot of work for now. We have the sex column, which we can easily change into a binary feature because there's only two unique values. We can just use 0 and 1 for each unique value. We have the age column. This is ready to use after we filled in the missing values. These two columns we can use right away. The ticket number is also a high cardinality feature. To check whether something is high cardinality, type in df ticket. You can see right away there's a lot of unique values. There's actually 681 unique values out of only 891 rows in total. So again, there might be something useful in the ticket number, but it sounds like a lot of work for now before we even build any model. Fair is the same as age. We can use right away after we finish filling missing values if there is any. Cabin number is an interesting one because you can see there's also a lot of missing values for the cabin number. And if we do a check, check for the length of this data frame, there's actually 687 passengers that we don't know the cabin for, which is also an indication that we might have to do either a lot of pre-processing or this isn't a useful feature. But we'll see after. I find it's often helpful to just build a baseline model with features that are ready to use or easy to generate before you add in more features, especially iffy features like name and ticket. Maybe there's something you can extract, maybe there isn't. So how do we know? We have to build a baseline model first and then see what kind of processing might help the model. Now let's look at what the embarked column is. Is there any missing values? There are only two missing values, which is pretty good. So let us then check how many unique values are in this column. There are only four unique values, which is a good indication that this column is easy to use. Even though it's in string format and we said strings aren't accepted in a lot of the models, we can process something like this embarked column with not a lot of missing values and low cardinality by using the pandas pd.getDummies. Let's just use getDummies on the embarked column for now and see what it does. I'm using two brackets here just as a personal preference. Two brackets gives you a pandas data frame, whereas one bracket only gives you a pandas series. If we use just one bracket, the column names are going to be a little bit different. The column names are going to be a little bit different. pd.getDummies essentially converts a string column and bar that have string entries C, Q, and S and a missing NAN value into one hot encoding. If we drop the embarked column in the data frame and then append the version after p.getDummies, we'll be able to incorporate this feature in the model. Now that we've done some initial visualization and understanding of the data, we can start building a simple baseline model with the features we have. I'm going to start a new notebook file. Call it baseline model. We're basically going to do the same pre-processing steps as in the data analysis file. Import the libraries, read the data, can just copy and paste things from this file, then fill in the missing values for the age column. We want to drop the features that we don't need for now. 
and the built-in playlist method for that is df.drop. Pass in the column names as a list. Name, ticket, and cabin. Let's see what this returns us. This returns us the data frame with those columns dropped. But if we look at the variable df, these columns still remain. This is because the drop method is not going to modify the original df. In order to make it modify the original data frame, we have to set in place equals true. Now our data frame is going to be left with only the features we want. We won't be dropping the passenger ID even though we said it's not going to be useful because if we take a look at the sample submission file, gender submission, we're going to use the passenger ID as a mapping to what we're predicting for. This is going to be used by Kaggle when it evaluates our predictions for the test set. So we'll drop this feature right before the training time. We still won't be able to feed this data frame into a model because there's still columns with string values, sex and embarked. These are both low cardinality features. The sex column, we've already know there are only two possible values, male or female, and the embarked column can only take on S, C, or Q, and there are two missing values which we can just ignore. For a binary string value, we can also use the getDummies method sex, and get a one hollow coding, append this back to the data frame, and it will be ready for use at training time. But because this feature is binary, we can represent all the male entries as 0 and all the female entries as 1. The benefit of doing this is that it saves us an extra feature. Most of the time, more features makes training time for a model longer, and it adds unnecessary complexity because the model will have to figure out that these two columns actually describe the same thing, whereas if we just pass in a sex column with zeros and ones, the model will know that this is essentially one feature. We're going to go with the second way without getting done, it's just to see how we can make that happen. We're going to do essentially the same thing here, df.locate, pass in a condition of everything we want to find, which is every entry where the sex is female, comma, then type in the column name that we want to change, sex column, set it to 1, do the same thing for a male column, set it to 0, and take a look at the df verb now. Now the sex column will no longer contain string values. At this point, we can get dummies for the embarked column, which we don't have to drop this column, get dummies, and then join the one hot encodings back in. If we just pass in the entire data frame into pandas.getDummies, we'll see that this one hot encoding is appended. Now set the df variable to the version after we get dummies. And at this stage, we can start building a model. I'm going to introduce a model that I really like as a baseline prototype. It's called the Extra Tree Classifier. You may know what a random forest is. I'm not going to go too deep into what an Extra Tree Classifier is. It's basically a slight variation in the random forest model that introduces more randomness in the classifier. I don't usually remember what all of these classifiers are called and what all of their methods are from the sklearn library, so I will usually go to their documentation. In the documentation, scroll down, and you'd usually be able to see examples here of how to use this library. I'm just going to copy all of these. So first we want to import the extra trees classifier. Then we want our x and y's for the training set. We don't want to use all of the entries in DF as the training set because that way we won't be able to evaluate what our performance is. Even though Kaggle does support us with the test set, we don't have the label for that. So for some quick evaluation, we might just want to do something like an 80-20 split, where we randomly select 80% of the data as our training set, and 20% of which as our test set, which we'll use for evaluation. You can do the splitting yourself since it's not super complicated, but sklearn also provides a function for this. It's called the train test split. Let's look at an example for that. First, we want to import the function. This line will do the splitting. 
Now, how do we use this line and split our df variable into x train, x test, y train, and y test? What do we pass in as the x and y? The label is fairly easy. Spot in this case, which is the y variable, and this is just the survived column. In x, we want to pass in everything but the survived or passenger ID column, which you can do using the drop method. In the test set, we just want 20%, 0 0.2. Random state can be any random integer. Oops. Our x train is going to look like this. And it's only going to contain 712 rows. Our Y train is also going to be 712 rows. And it's going to map exactly to these 712 rows in the X train. Let's make sure that happens also for X test and Y test. And again, they're the same size. We can define our classifier, CLF. Use just the default parameters. Fit the model with the X-train and Y-train we just created. This is going to be very fast because our training set is small. Then we can predict for the test set. This is what the model predicts from our test set based on what it's trained on. Let's take a look at the actual labels. We can already see some overlaps here and some incorrect predictions, but obviously we don't want to be checking for this ourselves. The sklearn metrics module provides several evaluation techniques. We want to import accuracy score. And another thing that's very useful is the confusion matrix, which I'll explain later. Pass in the labels. I want to pass this in as a list, and then pass in the predictions. How do we interpret this confusion matrix? In sklearn, for binary classification problem, the confusion matrix will be made up of four quadrants: true negative, false positive, false negative, and true positives. Then what this confusion matrix means is that we successfully predicted 60 survived cases correctly, 88 death cases correctly, and we've incorrectly predicted 17 death cases as survived and 14 survived cases as dead. What accuracy does that give us? I'm just going to copy these, paste that. That's 82.68% accuracy which is not bad for a baseline model. I'll end this video right here, and next time, we'll make our predictions on the test that Kaggle provided and submit our predictions to the Kaggle kernel and see where we land on the leaderboard. After that, we might be happy enough or we might want to make some adjustments. See you next time.